Hey guys, Wally here, and i um, sort of back. Just wanted to quickly let you know that we have an active lore Discord that accepts all players of all games. We mainly have Destiny, World of Warcraft, Division, Overwatch players in our server, and many more, but we all share one common cause. We love lore. We share an experience of wonder in new universes. And we love examining these worlds. If playing with and for a community like that sounds interesting to you, feel free to join. We let all in, we accept all, and we're eager to grow our community into something a little different. Check out the link in the description below. And without any more delays, let's hop right into the video. Welcome, lore scribes and truth seekers. Welcome those whose minds wander and urge for unknown destinations, where knowledge is ripely plucked at will. If you are like me, you find interest in these times of war and decadence because of opportunity, great opportunity it holds for discovery, whether it be of sorcery or mythos, of chaos or order, of patron gods or dark gods. This era offers us all a chance at fulfillment. And for us, our calling is understanding. It is the discussion of truce and their mirrored falsehoods to declare the world a thing of reason and explainability to those less inclined to wonder. And as we write from the center of Altdorf, the tiered human capital, of the new would-be Emperor Karl and his fracturing empire, we begin to wonder if uniting this empire and re reconciling with these elector counts is the true goal, or is it that of survival? But I believe these hands and quill may be reaching ahead of our current narrative. Let us discuss the world as the mighty Sigmar would have it. The world in which our beloved empire of man is beset by ruthless ratmen, brutal greenskins, the rumblings of dark gods and their worshipping northmen. Where the Southlands are entombed in shifting desert sands, encasing more than just dead kings. Where the elves battle one another over a timeless betrayal where the dwarves the most stout of mankind's allies are withdrawn by their grudgingly bitter personality and the loss of their ancestral Karaks. It is an age of war, of bravery, of honor, and senseless, senseless brutality. This is the age of the Warhammer. To start, we must begin with the history of humanity, its fractured factions of the Empire, Britonia, and the various colony kingdoms that lie to the south in Araby, and of course, the New World deep to the west. We start here because to us humans, wherever we lie, is the most familiar, perhaps the most recognizable, as the world we live in is filled with beasts and terrors beyond any imagining. The Empire, the glorious kingdom of Sigmar, founded centuries, if not more, ago from the wandering barbarian tribes, is much like a glittering beacon of light, desperately attempting to protect the people that often succumbs to what lies in the dark. It is with sheer military might and the fondness of dogmatic religious orders that this human empire situated in the heart of the Old World, is steadfast, fearing all but minor threats externally, and rather convoluted politicking internally. Mind you, the Empire is not without its own threats. The orc incursions from the southern badlands, the goblin-infested mountains, the various chaos-aligned northmen, and of course, the rumors of man-sized rats infesting the various undercities. All of them threaten to decimate the docile peace of the Empire. To better explain the Empire, it should be more viewed as a disunified confederation of nation states that has uh, no one central government, split between various nations ruled by elector counts. Each human kingdom, respectfully, Reichland, Wizenland, Talabakland, Midland, Nordland, Ostermark, Hawkland, Averland, Sturland, and Ostland. 
Of course, there is Marienburg as well, but those merchants fattened by years of trade and neutrality who claim independence are no more than a stepping stone for our Carl. These kingdoms, while well, technically independent from one another, share the same religious and cultural traditions that are generally accepted across each other's state. Under times of great duress, these nation states will unify under an emperor, such as the great Karl Franz. But those times are few and far between. A large region the human states do not remain unified under a central government consistently is naturally due to the politics and ambitions of the various elector counts and their ruling bodies situated at each of the state's central capital. You see, to them, serving an emperor and serving their state's people do not often share the same goal. And while the threat to humanity may not care for these politics, all the same, humanity continues to struggle against itself first, and the forces of chaos or violence second. But how or why did these nations form at all? As originally, humanity was nothing more than roaming barbarian tribes stuck in the quagmire of natural petty violence against one another. It was not until the rise of Sigmar, the to-be deity emperor of humanity did these barbarians who only played at war truly unify and accept the mantle of old world rulership and its dominion. During this period, roughly 1500 years before the rise of Sigmar, humanity was a migrant people fleeing their enemies who are not truly understood from the east in the world Ed mountains. These human tribes were recorded as migrants by the dwarves of old, who both traded and protected some of the human migrants for great portions of gold, cattle, and salt, the main trade resources for these early humans. But during this time of great migration, a more violent group of human tribes arrived as well into the central old world, noted as the Hunbro kin, the Tuto kin, the Murrow kin, and the Junton kin. These four tribes carried with them bronze weaponry and more violent tendencies of their agricultural predecessors. Over centuries, these tribes of both warriors and farmers warred against one another, clashing like two great oceans of brutality. Both as the dwarven power receded over the ages, so did the protection provided to these human tribes, more prevalent Goblins and orcs, chaos warriors and various mutants forced these human tribes to unify from villages and hostels to fortified cities and powerful castles. With minor militias prepared to defend their brethren from constant warfare aimed against them. During these perilous times of human tribes of various descent would form the cities of Reichdorf, Nuln, and Middenheim. But these fortifications, even with their great walls embodied by human ingenuity, would be tested during the time of the Great Orc Invasion. Humanity, for all its ability, would be pressed against the hard edge of extinction. But this was a time of great heroes and legendary feats. It was a time of human-born deities. It was the time of Sigmar. The stories of Sigmar are varied and somewhat contradictory. Ask any one of the Sigmarite cultists for a full account of Sigmar's early days, and you may hear 15 different tales of his birth, all of course true, and to say otherwise is to walk dangerously close to blasphemy. Here is what we should say about our patron lord, Sigmar Heldenhammer. His birth details, while difficult to truly detail, are noted as being during the appearance of the great twin-tailed comet. That sign, or omen, depending on your interpretation, is often a signal for many for a moment of great importance or great disaster. For humanity, the birth of Sigmar was the turning point, where humans would no longer consider themselves prey to a world who wanted them dead for no other reason than their will to live. Sigmar's birth was said to be during an auspicious time when the appearance of the twin-tailed comet illuminated the sky. This comet, whether you believe it to be a sign of the gods, a natural phenomenon, or some proficient wish-granter, matters little. 
as the history of Sigmar was written by his indomitable will. As humanity struggled, Sigmar would begin to take leadership by force of local human tribes, situated in what we now call Reichland. Through his force of will alone, Sigmar, at a remarkably young age, took control of various local tribes to form an unlikely power to challenge the more, perhaps, revelant and ambitious chieftains, especially the chieftain of the wolves in Middenheim. But Sigmar would not fight alone. As if fated, he would spark a long-lasting alliance that is unbreakable to this day. Sigmar's early friendship with the ancient dwarven king Kurgan Ironbeard began during a skirmish with a rampaging orc warband. During the time of Sigmar, the orcs ran freely across human and dwarven lands, both due to their natural ferocity and martial ability and to the recession of power of the ancient dwarves. Kurgan Ironbeard was a reformist to an extent, much like Sigmar, and had begun to lead and manage his forces against the more dangerous of orcish warbands, whether they operated in human lands or dwarvish-occupied mountains. While Sigmar battled against rampaging orc armies, he was also internally uniting humanity in one of the first glimpses of empire. The many human tribes would either fall into the iron but righteous grip of humanity's new monarch, or be pushed away, forever subject to the unknown abyss of being totally forgotten. But Sigmar's war against humanity and the continuous battle against the brutal and seemingly infinite orcish warbands would culminate during the Battle of Blackfire Pass. The pass. Imagine a slender canyon with blade-like outcroppings of rock and tree surrounding all. This would be where humanity made its statement against the forces of violence and disorder. That humanity would be forever established as a dominant power in the old world, not because they sought power or because avarice and greed motivated them to hold dominion over all lesser species, but because the needlessly violent tastes of those weighed against them forced them into the spotlight of destiny with the glorious patron lord Sigmar at humanity's helm. But the story of Sigmar, the first empire of man, and the recession of the dwarves will have to come at another time. For now, think upon humanity's humble start and the empire we have set out before us now. When we truly begin to examine it, the rivalries of our current elector counts does not seem so different than the trespasses of early human tribes against one another. Humanity and the Empire will remain forever strong, forever sturdy, forever unassailable. So as long as we look to the leadership and courage of Sigmar and that of his compatriots in the early Empire.